Hi, I'm Jay Gribble, Vice President of International Programs at the Population Reference Bureau in Washington, D.C. These days we hear a lot about the demographic dividend, and I'd like to take a couple of minutes to talk to you more about what the dividend is. Definitionally, a demographic dividend is the accelerated growth in a country's economy that begins with the change in the age structure of its population and is achieved through strategic investments and policies. But there are two caveats about a demographic dividend. First of all, it's time-bound because technically it begins and ends with the changes in the age structure of the population. And the second very important caveat is that it's not automatic. Many people think that having a young population ensures that a demographic dividend will take place. But without the proper investments, economic growth can happen, but there won't be a demographic dividend. So what gets the gears moving toward a demographic dividend? First of all, it's a change in the age structure of a population. And without this fundamental step, a dividend won't be realized. By lowering fertility through family planning, women having fewer children, what happens is the population's average age goes up. As fertility remains low, the size of the working age population grows relative to the total population. And as a result, there's more adults working in the labor force per child, and that means there's more resources available to invest in the health, the education, and nutrition and well-being of children. That's the population part. But in addition, there are four key policies that need to be considered when talking about a demographic dividend. And one of them is health. Now we know that good health is linked to improved wealth. There's lots of research that supports that. But what is good health? Countries need strong health systems. They need access to primary health care, but they also need to have access to health facilities and hospitals. So governments need to reallocate the resources so that the country's health needs are met effectively. Then thinking about children, that's a primary area for demographic dividend investments. Keeping children healthy and attentive in school. We know that unhealthy children don't do well in school, and this can lead to a demographic drag rather than dividend. Another area of the population that needs health attention are adolescents and young adults. They need to understand the importance of having active lifestyles and avoid taking on bad habits, sedentary lifestyles, excessive alcohol use, and smoking. And then finally, young people, adults need access to reproductive health and family planning. This is critical to bringing about the change in the population structure, and at the same time, to helping people achieve their life goals. A second area is education. Because of the Millennium Development Goals, countries are increasingly paying attention to universal access to primary education, and this is great. But they also need to focus on the quality of education to make sure that as children move through the education system, they're learning what they need. Countries also need to focus on education for girls, taking advantage of every opportunity to improve the human capital of their population. Girls and boys with higher levels of education earn higher wages. Women who are educated can work outside the home. Education of girls, we know, contributes to older age at marriage, later age at childbearing, and healthier children. And also related to education, access to secondary and tertiary education. It's in high school and in university that people learn the analytic skills that will help them become more competitive in the labor force and take on more technical jobs. A third strategic area for policies and investments is governance. This is critical to attracting the investments that are needed to stimulate the economic growth. Civil environments that encourage people to invest are critical to a demographic dividend. People need to feel confident that laws are enforced, that governments are efficient, that corruption is minimized, and that when a contract is signed, it's actually enforced. At the same time, governance also needs to include gender equitable policies. 
women and girls need to have the same opportunities that men and boys have. And it's important that governments invest in policies and efforts that overcome inherent gender-based barriers so that all people can contribute in the short term and in the long term to the accelerated economic growth that the dividend promises. And the fourth area for strategic investment and policy reform has to do with the economy. First of all, countries need sound trade policies. That means that they're able to import as well as export the goods that they manufacture. Trade is a country's lifeblood. Economic policies relate to investments. Families, through a demographic dividend, will have more resources to invest, and so there need to be instruments and vehicles through which they can invest. But at the same time, countries need policies that promote foreign investments to stimulate infrastructure and job creation. A lot of the economic growth will take place in cities, but at the same time, economic opportunities need to be available outside of the urban areas. Microfinance programs have proved to be an effective way to improve access to resources in peri-urban and in rural areas, so these programs need to be expanded. And fourth, the labor force needs to be able to respond to the evolving economy. Many countries are currently in an agriculturally based economy. But through the dividend, they'll become more manufacturing oriented and technology oriented. And so the education system, together with the economic policies, needs to be able to identify the trends in the economic growth and have a responsive educational policy and labor force to respond to the opportunities. The demographic dividend is an opportunity that developing countries have to accelerate economic growth. It begins with changing the population structure, and family planning is key to making that happen. At the same time, countries need to invest in the health, the education, good governance, and economic policies that come together and stimulate accelerated economic growth. It's not guaranteed, it doesn't happen automatically, but by following these types of strategic investments, countries are able to accelerate economic growth.